Julie Rocks here, and today I have something pretty special for you all. I stumbled across a video by Michaela Schmid on how to make pigments out of flower petals. It was such an interesting concept that I dove into articles about what are known as lake pigments, which surprisingly there weren't many of. But I learned the main idea in that you can extract pigments from natural dye material and have them cling onto a neutral substance. In this case, I used something called aluminum sulfate or aluminum potassium sulfate, aka alum, which is actually used to preserve certain foods, along with washing soda, which is used for general cleaning. So these are sort of household materials that can be combined to create pigment powder for paints. Now before I lose you, I won't be diving into much of the science behind creating pigments. Because quite honestly, it's boring. Also chemistry was never my strong suit. I worked with two batches of dye materials, the second turning out much better than the first. For the first batch, I experimented with berries from my backyard, including black currants, raspberries, and strawberries, along with lavender, spinach, mint leaves, and pickled beets. After harvesting the dye materials, the second step is to boil them for about 45 minutes to extract all of the color. I believe I boiled each of my dye materials in about two cups of water, and by the end, I was left with one cup of colored liquid. The blueberries turn out a lot more vibrant in this stage than anything else. I then poured the liquid into jars and added half a tablespoon of aluminum sulfate. So the alum is the more popular option for creating lake pigments, but for me, aluminum sulfate was more accessible. I actually found it in a plant nursery. It's apparently used as a fertilizer for hydrangeas. The other day, I stumbled across some in the plant section of Canadian Tire, which is sort of a home hardware store here in Canada. And then, of course, there is the US Amazon, which literally has everything. I found one article that said that these two substances can be used interchangeably, and that was enough assurance I needed to roll with it. There really isn't a lot of information out there on lake pigments, so if you have any questions, I'll try my best to answer, but I honestly don't know much either outside of what I show you in this video. Anyways, after adding the aluminum sulfate, which I'm just going to call alum from now on for the sake of ease, even though it's a slightly different chemical makeup, some of my colored liquid changed hue slightly after I added the alum in. And I actually dissolved it in boiling water before adding it, this way it would mix a lot better. It was interesting to see this color change. In some jars, the color became deeper, while in others, it actually changed completely, which was a pleasant surprise. After adding the alum, which is designed to draw the colors out of these natural dye materials, the next step is to add a neutral base for the pigment to cling onto. There are different options, but I found washing soda to be the most accessible. Thank you, Amazon. So like with the alum, I dissolved the washing soda in boiling water, then added it into my mixture. And to my surprise and lack of chemistry knowledge, this happened. And me being me, when I make a mess, it just gives me permission to make an even bigger mess. So I rolled with it. But it's fine, I totally learned my lesson for the next batch. Just kidding. If you believe me, you have way too much faith in me and my level of patience. And as much as I appreciate it, that's simply not the case. As I like to say, like life, art is messy. So I gave myself permission to make a bit of a mess. Okay guys. So I kind of made a mess, but it's fine. Uh, just to remind you, oh god, okay. Lavender, see, I'm already losing track. So there's the lavender. There's like, it's like a, I don't know how to describe it, but there's a tinge of green, which is interesting. Uh, these two didn't change much. These are the mint leaves here. And then the spinach. <laughs> 
And then um, over here, I have the pickled beets. And then, oh Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so I put this here, because I believe, yeah, this one here is strawberry, which turned into a purple, so cool. And then this here is the black currant, which I think is my favorite so far. It's sort of like an indigo purple. Um, anyways, I have to figure out how to get these back into the jars <laughs> with all the foam. I'm not, I didn't think it was going to fall off this much. <laughs> but yeah, as soon as I pack it in, um, I'm going to go to bed and I'll check in on them tomorrow morning. And I still have like the red onions and the, the beets, the regular beets as well, that I didn't get to. So um, I'll probably end up doing that tomorrow if I can find more jars. Okay. Yeah, see, it's already past midnight, so I got to sleep. But I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. This is what my setup looked like during the first batch. The next step was to wait until all of the pigment reaches the bottom of the jar and replace the water that sat on top until it ran clear. I believe this took about four days. Following this, I grabbed a coffee filter and strained out the liquid. This left us with the 2B pigment powder. This one here is pickled beets. I thought it would be brighter, but apparently, um, they could change colors after they dry. So we'll we'll see, we'll see what that looks like. Um, this one here is lavender, which is like a nice greenish gray color. I'm not gonna be married to these colors because like, I don't know, I don't wanna be disappointed just in case they change even more. This one I'm really happy with. This uh, was the black currants. And then over here is a strawberry. And I don't know what the science is behind the different levels of sediment because some have looked like they have a lot more than others. The spinach and the mint leaf. This one here is the mint leaf. Um, they didn't really take on the colors too well, but we'll see what it looks like when it dries. So now the next step is I'm gonna remove a bit of the water and then I'm gonna filter each of them through um, one of these things. This is actually for coffee. And all of the sediment will sit on the filter and I'll leave this filter out to dry. And once it's dried, that's what, I mean, I'll be left with the pigment. So I'll just have to um, crush it until it's a fine powder and we'll be good to go. So fingers crossed this works out. Uh, once again, I'll keep you guys updated. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully it turns out okay. So this is the status of the experiment so far. We have spinach, which is a really bright yellow, uh, mint leaves, which has some particles. It's weird, there are like some brown spots. And I don't know if it's because I didn't filter out the mint leaves properly, but I mean, none of the other colors has that. And I use the same filter for everything. So yeah, I have no idea what that is, but whatever. <laughs> Then strawberry here, which um, had the least amount of sediment, which was kind of weird. Uh, pickled beets, not loving this color. We have lavender, which I split into two because I made a mess. <laughs> and this is kind of cool. It's like a grayish green color. And then finally, my favorite, black currant, which is nice and bright. So uh, I'll just let these sit here until they dry completely and then I'll grind them up and we'll see if they change colors at all. But so far, like this is an interesting palette. I feel like I could paint something <laughs> with all of these colors and it would look decent. So yeah, I'm going to keep experimenting with uh, different dye materials. Uh, I'm thinking of playing around with um, maybe turmeric, cumin paprika, different spices, um, as well as um, red onion, um, red cabbage, and beets. Not pickled beets, but just regular beets. So we'll see what different reds and purples we can get out of those. Hey guys, 
So this is where I'm going to leave the video off for today. <laughs> there will be a part two, and I hate when people do this, so I know now I'm doing it, and I'm a total hypocrite, but it was getting too long. Uh, if you want to find out how the watercolors turned out made from my homemade harvested pigments, then uh, you'll find out in part two, but I'll give you the short answer. Yes, it worked out and um, the watercolors aren't incredible, which I kind of expected, but I was able to create watercolors out of it and you guys can find out more next week when I post the second part of this. So I hope you enjoyed it so far. If you have any questions, comment down below. And I mean, I've only done this twice, so you know, what do I know? Um, but I'll try to share some of my knowledge with you if I have anything to comment on. Um, yeah, just let me know. Thanks for watching part one, and again, I'll see you guys next week.